Hello and welcome to another Murders at Karlov Manor draft. I'm Paul Chion, and we are well on our way for our journey to rank 1. We are currently sitting at rank 304 in Mythic. We slid down just a little bit. It's not just from the losing, all right? It's not just from the losing. It's also from just a bunch more people hitting Mythic uh, um, while I was asleep. Let, let's, just, just, let's just go with that. All right, but let's head straight into this pack here. Um, Reenact a crime, I don't think is especially good. So I think it's between one of the commons here. I'm not a really a big fan of any of these cards. I do like Tunnel Tipster. So I'm going to try that over the Season Consultant. I know white is generally the considered the best color, but I haven't drafted green that much. So I think it's close enough where I'm just going to go with the green card here and see kind of how my draft goes. I want to get a little, little more experience drafting green base decks. That doesn't mean I'm going to immediately not pivot to a white card when I see it, especially when it's a premium white common in inside source. Inside source... It's a toss-up. I mean, that's what makes white so incredible. You have inside source, uh, the exile target creature gain to life enchantment, and and um, I think there was one more card that was in the mix, but there were three white commons that were all extremely, extremely close, and uh, this card is up there. This card's fantastic. The uncommons are okay. Uh, Push-pull is a decent card, uh, especially if you can cast a pull half of it, but... I have found pull and push to be a little underwhelming just because I, everybody just wants to be tempo-oriented and proactive. Rare is missing out of this pack, though, so we're still going to try to figure out what our lane is supposed to be. Going into pack number three, we have a few options. So we have Season Consultant, which is a decent two-drop to play. Um, but Nervous Gardener is also a decent two-drop to play, and I prefer this to the Season Consultant. It's got a lot of flexibility. You can just play it turn two. Uh, the most important thing is on the draw, to have a 2-drop to play on the draw to block. But then this also just gets you mana. It's a face-down card for Tunnel Tipster. So I think I'm going to go with the Nervous Gardener here over the other commons to consider. I think I want to take that green card over something like a Repulsive Mutation, which I think has more upside. But I want to just solidify myself into green first before delving into a third color for a trick. And now we're going to take a pack. Oh, wow. This is a great pack. There's both Eavesdropper and Makeshift Binding. That's a great sign. Um, hopefully, this means that both colors are open. And green-white is the second highest winning archetype in the um, in Murders at Karloff Manor draft. And I'm happy taking Makeshift Binding over the Eavesdropper. Although, I do love me an Eavesdropper. I really, really do. I think it's a great, great card. Green-white, although I think the Makeshift Binding probably is a little bit better. Here we have the option between Has the Vigilante and Vengeful Creeper. Both are solid. But I've actually been surprised by how good the Vengeful Creeper is. And I think, especially with the Tunnel Tipster, having more face down cards is nice. Look, this is a 5 mana 5-5. Five five. This is a 5 mana 4-4 four four that puts a counter on something. So it's also kind of like a 5 mana 5-5. Five five. But I think the fact that you can play this on turn 3 gives it the slight edge over Vigilante. And again, the flipping this over and getting something is... Definitely a real thing that happens in this color combination. So getting clues, killing makeshift bindings, all relevant stuff. Here we have the choice between Rubble Belt Maverick and Museum Nightwatch. There's a public thoroughfare. I'm going to make a public announcement. Do not take this card. There are some formats that's slow enough where you can't afford to play an effect like this. This is not one of them. Do not draft public thoroughfare in your decks. All right. That aside, I'm going to take Museum Nightwatch here over Rubble Belt Maverick. I think Maverick does do a decent amount of work, but I also really, really like the Night Watch. World Spine Worm. Okay. Well, we're not going to take that one. We're not going to take that one. Maybe if we get the show and tell. There's a late Night Drinker Moroi. There is an Offender at Large. That's also decent, but I'm just going to just stay the course, stay green white. Every pack has had reasonable playables for us. Let's go ahead and take Rubble Belt Maverick for our green white deck. And now we're going to take another Vengeful Creeper. No More Lies is decent if you're blue-white. Certainly not powerful enough to wor uh, where it's worth splashing. They Went This Way is a little slow. Not a big fan of taking a turn off to cast a spell in this format. Um, I do like the car just in a vacuum. Just gr uh, a ramping growth effect plus investigate is pretty nice. But I'm going to take another Vengeful Creeper here. And, you know, while this deck doesn't have anything phenomenal... Uh, it does have a reasonable curve, 
removal and you know just decent creatures that are common and uncommon hopefully we can get some payoffs and some great uncommons here i don't think i'm gonna hmm do i take a they went this way or a slice from the shadows i guess i'll take a they went this way in case there's something i really want to splash but i would really prefer not to so i'm just going to put that in my sideboard for now we'll pick up an airtight alibi just as a potential combat trick it's not my favorite one. I definitely prefer plus three, plus three trample and also plus two, plus two investigate over airtight alibi and also on the job. So there are three common tricks that I prefer over airtight alibi, but if you don't have any, then it's something that you can play. All right, so I'm going to use this few just so we can take a look at our curve and separate out our... A nervous gardener, you really kind of want to play on turn three, but it does... It is nice because you have that flexibility to play it turn turn uh, turn two. Yeah, it makes our curve look a little nicer. All right, what do we have in this pack? Okay, so we have some exciting, exciting cards. Let's go back to this. Lamplight Phoenix is great, can't play it. Lazav is nice, can't play it. But we have the choice between Eavesdropper, Sumala Sentry, and Get a Leg Up. I like all those cards, but I really have wanted to make this card work. So I'm going to take the awesome two-drop in Sumala Sentry. We already have one, two, three four face down cards to play in our deck. I do love to like, get a leg up and I also love Locksted on Eavesdropper. I've passed a bunch of these. Hopefully we can still get some over the course of this draft. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, this is just such a great body, right? It lets you kind of, if you just flip over one card, boom, you've gotten your value. So I really like this, especially nice with cards that are kind of on the cheaper side to flip over. That's where it really shines. Here, I think I'm going to take a Culvert Ambusher over a Sample Collector. Uh, I think it's kind of close, but I don't mind the Ambusher. And then also just the fact that we have the Sentry and the Tipster makes kind of was the tiebreaker for me uh, with regards to that pick. And wow, look at this pack. There's a War Leader's Call. Well, we can't take that. We can potentially splash it, but I think Tunnel Tipster is fantastic. This is shaping up to be an awesome, awesome kind of face down creature deck, right? We have Double Creeper, Culvert Ambusher, Museum Nightwatch, and Nervous Gardener already. Tunnel Tipster is the perfect two drop for this deck. A little sad about the War Leader's Call, but let's stay the course here. Our green two mana cards are just fantastic, right? Double Tunnel Tipster, Sumala Sentry plus Nervous Gardener. Really, really like that. There's a lot of return lands from your graveyard type effects, but I'm not ever interested in any of them. Here we have the option between Glint Weaver and V2 Gazi Inspector. And here I feel like we have enough cheap things so far where Glint Weaver is actually one of the few expensive creatures that I don't mind playing in my deck. So I'm going to play this. This is just the moment you cast this, you're just like, all right, well, I'm back in it. I feel really, really safe when I have a Glint, uh, Glint Weaver in play. So I'm going to take that because I feel pretty good about my curve. The V2 Gazi Inspector is also pretty decent, but look, we have Double Tipster, Gardener, Sumala Sentry. We should probably get at least one or two more. So I'm going to go with the powerful Uncommon here to go with the two ramp creatures that we have. Here, it's a very easy Novice Inspector. Fuss Bother is also pretty good, but you just don't pass Novice Inspector in this format. That is what I've learned. It's just like, oh, there's a Novice Inspector in the pack? Well, there better be a rare. That's kind of where I'm at at this point with a card like the Novice Inspector. All right, moving on here, we have Sanitation Automaton or Chalk Outline. Do we have anything to do with Chalk Outline? Not really. Not really. So I'm just going to take the Automaton. I'm not a huge fan of the Outline in general. I think it might be a little bit better in black-green. We're not collecting a ton of evidence right now. And so I'm just going to take the two-mana card here in case we need it. I'll put it in the sideboard for now, but I'll, I'll put it here in case we need it. Wow, that's a late Leering Onlooker. But that's also a late bite down on crime. So this pack has been going super well for us. We've been getting a bunch of decent creatures. We got the Sentry, the Tipster, the Novice Inspector late, along with the Glint Weaver. And we got a bite down on crime. So really, really happy with the way that this pack is going so far. And let's hope we can close strong. There's a Hustle and Bustle here, but I don't think it's especially good if you can only cast the Bustle side. It's, six, it's a six mana spell. I guess you can turn a flip... You can flip over a card, which adds a little bit of value to it, but still something I'm not super interested in taking. I'm just going to 
put a put another face down card here in the Sanguine Savior. But I think these are all kind of more like cards I would rather not play my deck. But if I need to, I will. But this is kind of the current layout that we have right now. But it's it's looking solid. It's shaping up well. It's shaping up well. Could use a couple of extra combat tricks, right? Get a leg up, for example, was a card that we passed. We took the Sumala Sentry over, which I still think I like, but I'm not sure. Get a leg up has been really, really good. But if you're but the way that I look at it is if you're green and white, I mean there's just that is the combat trick color combination. There's two white combat tricks that I want and a green common combat trick that I want. And I'm happy with any number of those cards. So I just hope that I get one basically in this last pack. And I'm feel, I'm hoping that it's not going to be too hard to do so. All right. Pack three gives us nothing. Hmm. Well, I don't really want to take Rubble Belt Maverick. I don't know that I want double Glint Weaver though. It's between Glint Weaver or not on my watch. And you know, I'm going to take the cheaper card here. I think with all the face down cards, we have enough to do in the late game. And I like having the one Glint Weaver, but I never want to draw two. And I want a little bit of early interaction. We're not super aggressive, right? We're just, we're putting permanents onto the battlefield, but we're playing tipsters and we're just trying to set up a little bit. So I'm going to take not on my watch. I actually think it's pretty decent in this deck. Moving on to this pack, we have Fanatical Strength. And I might be looking to take that card. I don't really need House the Vigilante. Not interested in splashing the Assassin's Trophy. So it's between Fanatical Strength and Crowd Control Warden. And yeah, I mean, I already have a good number of morphs. And this is a solid one, but I think Fanatical Strength is great. Um, especially in a format where you're playing a bunch of face down War 2 creatures. It's a lot harder to get blown out. So I'm just going to make sure that I pick up the combat trick. I've been Look, I've been talking about picking up combat tricks this entire draft. Feel like it'd be a little bit odd for me not to take one there. And now we have the choice between Bite Down on Crime and Fuss Bother. I like Bite Down on Crime in this deck. This deck doesn't look as aggressive. It seems a little bit more mid-rangey. And so I'm not just constantly Boros attacking here. I know you can make some, some doctors, but that costs six mana. It's pretty inefficient. So I'd rather just have another one. Was, and wow, that's a hide in plain sight. What pick is this? Fourth pick, hide in plain sight. Great. This deck now, not only does it just have a solid base, we now have bombs, right? We have a hide in plain sight. Really, really happy about that card. There's also bite down and crime. We're definitely in the right color in at least green. Maybe not white, green, definitely so. Okay, that's exciting. Hide in plain sight. And now we get a Market Watch Phantom. So now we get another excellent two drop to play in our deck. There's a Topiary Panther, which is okay. And a course to kill if you're blue black. But we are happy taking the Market Watch Phantom. And now look, we have seven things to play on turn two or one, which is great. A bunch of morphs, some good top end, some number of tricks, removal, four removal spells, a trick. Yeah, I'm loving where we're at right now. Here we have the choice between Assassin's Trophy, which I'm not really interested in splashing, or Cease and Desist. I've never played with this card. I'll take it, but it's probably not going into our deck. Here I'm going to take a hard-hitting question. So now, I mean, I'm really happy with this pack just because we're able to get a Bite Down on Crime, hard-hitting question, and Fanatical Strength, and not on my watch. So we got a lot of nice spells to add to the uh, already decent suite of creatures that we have. There is a Defenestrated Phantom, which I don't really want to play, but I think we're going to have to. We're going to probably have to play some of those morphs that we saw uh, into our decks. Wow. There's just infinite Assassin's Trophies. I'll take a Vigilante. I don't mind playing one copy of this card in my deck. But keep in mind, I mean, I have a bunch of five drops already. Like, I can play all of these on five. But the Vigilante is still decent. We need two more cards still, so I'd be surprised if this doesn't end up in our deck. Because if I put all these morphs on the three mana slot, I mean, this is kind of what our deck looks like here. But like, like, like in the, the setup here so far. Do I have enough things to do early? I think so. Monologue, tax, or pick your poison. Well, I'm, not, I'm never taking pick your poison. So take the rare. Take the rare. All right. Didn't table anything, so yeah, we're going to need to put a couple of filler cards in, but I think overall, this deck still looks solid. Really wish we could have picked up some Loxodon Investigators. Maybe there were some instances where I should have taken them, 
but um, but it's okay. These are our spells. Probably cut hustle and bustle. Yep, easy cut there. And then now we just need to cut two two creatures among, I guess these four, as the cards that seem to be a little bit below what everything else is. I mean, it's also the Maverick, but I want to try this card. So it's going to be cutting two of these cards. Normally, I don't like Sanguine Savior that much. But I think in a deck where we are really trying to prioritize num the number of face-down cards we have with Dunnel Double Tunnel Tipster and Sumala Sentry, I kind of want to play them in my deck. Sumala Sentry also wants you to have cards that are relatively cheap to flip over. And this can help swing races with our big creatures. So I'm going to try the Sanguine Savior. But I think I will cut the Defenestrated Phantom. Just because... I mean, this is probably one of the worst morphs. It just... The body is so underwhelming for the amount of mana that you have to put in to flip this card. And then... I don't mind the Sanitation Automaton as another 2-mana card to play. The Surveil is definitely relevant. Um, trade something, surveil something into the graveyard, and then there's bite down and crime. So then it's between. So then I think it's these two cards as the final two cuts. Yeah, I do like also the idea of being able to flip this up and then put a counter on with the House of Vigilante. Also great with the Sumala Sentry. So let's cut these two. Not entirely confident about the Rubble Belt Maverick, but I think I like having a two power creature instead of the Rubble Belt Maverick as another. The thing is, I have enough. I think I meet the bar for number of cheap things. This gives me eight. No, seven. Seven is pretty reasonable. But I like the fact that this kind of smooths out my draws. And also the fact that um, it trades with a face down creature. So let's go with the Automaton over the Maverick. I think it's kind of close. I dug a little bit into the details. Very, very small numbers here, but the Automaton does seem to be a little bit better in green-white than the Rubble Boat Maverick. We also don't have a ton of collecting evidence, just the two bite down on crimes. So let's give this a shot. White, green, mid-range, beat, sun... I'll, I'll come up with the title later. Alrighty. We have a hand with no forests. So I'm going to mulligan. And I will keep this hand. It's just a matter of figuring out what I want to bottom. I believe it's going to be the Vengeful Creeper. We've got to keep all of our white cards. They're premium and Bite Down on Crime seems like it'll be pretty decent here. All right. Drew, all planes need a green source. Insidious Roots. Okay, our opponent going kind of deep here. I'm interested. Our, you know, we're we're in the mythic ranks right now, and our opponent is playing turn two insidious roots. So I kind of I'm kind of hoping that they figure out a way to make this good, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. Okay, what do I want to do? I can kill the researcher, or I can just play a face up night watch. What does this do? It just taps, untaps the thing. They, they can't really collect them. I guess they can. I guess they can collect evidence as early as next turn. So yeah, why don't we go ahead and just kill that? And then attack for six. Of course, they can have another collect evidence card, but I feel like it's just so easy to activate this. All right, Projector Inspector, sure. And another Bite Down on Crime. I don't think I'm interested this time. I just want to go ahead and play the Night Watch and attack for two. Let's play this face down. And then we'll just, we'll just flip it over end of turn. But this gives us an extra layer of protection. And that's a face down card from the opponent. Let's flip it up. And ooh, that is a Culvert Ambusher, which we will probably face down and just attack with these two creatures. While wow, our opponent is going down to five. 
Interesting. All right. I mean, they could have a sweeper, but it is what it is. It's not too bad of an exchange, right? Because Novice Inspector replaced itself. Inside Source is one creature with the token, and the Museum Night Watch is also a thing. And they are going full dirtle mode here, flipping over Fairy Snoop, getting a card, and then looting with the Projector Inspector. But we've got... We've got a nice squad next turn. We can flip over the Culvert Ambusher just to have as an extra big creature. I don't even really care about forcing anything to block, really. So, our opponent is a Soul Tide Detectives. They're going deep. Man, they, they, they took a lot. I will say this. I will say this. They, they took a lot of game actions. <laughs> they took a lot of game actions there. So they have two mana up. So I can go bite down on crime and kill projector inspector and just attack with everything. They do have two mana up though. So that's a little bit concerning. The safer play would be to just makeshift binding something and then attack with everything. What if I makeshift binding the projector inspector? Then they have to block these these two creatures. I can also just attack with everything and flip this up. I don't think that's that particularly good though. Bite down on crime seems like it has the most upside. Hmm. This is a big turn, so I'm thinking about it just for a little bit. Let's go ahead and... So this block's here, this block... Let's just attack... You know what? Let's just attack with those two. I can attack with this too. All right. And then let's... Um, should I force anything to block? I can force the projector inspector to block. Yeah, let's just do that. Okay. Well, I, I'm glad I didn't attack with everything. This is okay. Next turn, we have... Now we can collect evidence with Bite Down the Crime next turn. So we can cast Makeshift Binding plus Bite Down on Crime. Never mind. Can't do that. Not an option. Okay, our opponent cracking a clue. Making a plant with the... Oh, they are doing it. They are absolutely doing it here. More power to you. I, I, I respect the opponent for being able to get this done. I don't like losing. I will say that much, but let's see what they do here. I mean, that was a tremendous turn on their, on their part. And they're still at five. Wow, eliminate them. They cast so many things and had eliminate them possible next turn. So that was really, really rough for us. I can't imagine that they attack us. Okay, so Divine Creeper is interesting because it allows us to potentially kill the Insidious Roots. I mean, I can't... I don't even have a great attack with Culvert Ambusher. They can, like, double block? Yeah, this is... This is tough. They have managed to stabilize here. All right, let's let's face this down. And we're passing. They have a bunch of mana now with four cards in hand. I think we're going to lose this game. Wow, we try to make Insidious Roots work, but our opponent is way smarter than us. A blue? I mean, I don't even know what colors they are. 
Probably blue green detective splashing black. Gravestone strider with insidious roots. Oh my gosh. All right. I got to try this again. We tried it last time. We couldn't get it to work. But projector inspector to fill up your graveyard. It's a great way to fill up your graveyard. I was playing two man, like the analyst. The inspector is obviously great. Curious cadaver works really, really well with insidious roots. All right, bite down to collect evidence. Oh my gosh. Our opponent is getting all the value. Do they have a trick here too? Oh, oh on the board trick. <laughs> All right, all right, you got me. Oh my gosh, that was incredible. We're 15. Wow, what a turnaround. Okay, let's let's not give up just yet, I guess. But let's let's kill this insidious roots. But the damage has been done. Look at their board. And they've looked at so many cards. Okay, all right. Glint Weaver gets it done. Wow. That was awesome, Vito. That was an awesome victory. Look, I appreciate when people do cool things, even when it happens to me. It's like when you've been playing Magic for this long, you just have to, like, whenever, anytime you see something new or different, you just get excited. And that was really impressive. We kind of had them a little bit on the back ropes, but they were able to stabilize that one incredible turn where they took like three game action. They like flipped over the snoop, played another thing, and then also had to eliminate um, to prevent my attack from being any good. Wow. We even tried our best to try to limit their evidence collecting shenanigans. But the thing is, when you play Insidious Roots in your deck, you're going to find a way. Right? You're going to find a way to exile cards from your graveyard. And they had a really, really great setup for that. And talk about a deck where uh, Rubble Belt Maverick shines. Rubble Belt Maverick in an Insidious Roots deck. That is really, really great. Fill up your yard. And also exile it from your graveyard to get the trigger. All right. Let's bounce back. Ooh, we, we lost a lot of rating there. 358. Opponent on the play, but we have a one and a two. So feeling okay about this. Let's keep it. Novice Inspector into Sanitation Automaton. And then we have a makeshift binding and a bite down on crime. All right, Innocent Bystander. I bet they hate the fact that we have a Novice Inspector in play. That's a trade I will take every day. Um, Vengeful Creeper. I don't want to draw that. I have a bunch of spells in my hand, and I still need lands. I only have th uh, I only have a third land in my hand, so I'm interested in a mana source here over anything. And we still found the other Vengeful Creeper anyways. Get an Automaton. Okay, trading with the Bystander. And then which one of these do I want to play? I'll play the Ambusher face down, just because it costs five to flip up. So our opponent missed land drop number three. We are close to being able to miss our land drop as well. Our opponent is on tilt. All right. One nice is okay. I'll like one nice is fine, but when you start spamming the emotes, when you start spamming the emotes, come on. It happens to everybody. You are you are not alone. Look, we missed, we missed our fourth land drop. <laughs> and you're going to play like a shock. Yeah, like what are you complaining about? <sighs> See, opponents like this, th these are the ones that are like, they're just never the fun people to play against. You know what I mean? 
All right. Um, I really, really want to draw land. So I will make the attempt to do so. Okay, we found a land. Let's attack with our morph. Oh, wait. Oh. Whew. <laughs> I should have done this first. Let's kill this. All right. All right, another face down card from the opponent. They pass. Let's attack with the face down card. Let's let that happen. And then we'll play a fa face up vengeful creeper. Five, five, get them. The next turn, I mean, we have not on my watch isn't looking particularly good here. I will say, but bite down on crime and, make and makeshift binding will be nice. Okay, so our opponent is keeping up a bunch of mana, which definitely makes this scary. But I think I still need to attack. Okay, double block there. Oh wow, they just had actually nothing. Oh, they must have a shock effect. I see. I was waiting for them to respond before I flipped this up. Darn. <laughs> okay. My bad. I guess I should have flipped this up. Okay. Well, it's not. it doesn't matter. Let's just spend the mana now to flip it up. Let's cast um, Bite Down on Crime. This dies. And then let's play a land. Give this Vigilance and attack for nine. Okay. Got our opponent. Probably should have flipped it up. The thing is, I'm not really casting anything else that turn. I guess my thought was, if they don't do anything and let both their morphs die, I'm okay. But if they flip something big up, I might want to use a bite down on crime or my binding to kill the other creature. That's kind of why I didn't flip it up. I was like, well, I mean, if you're going to three for one yourself, go for it. All right. Here we have all forest and the savior, but we've got the turn two tipster, turn three face down gardener, go get a planes. It's a great start. Great, great start. I have an irrational love for the Tunnel Tipster. Who's on Team Tipster? Me. I, I'm, a, I'm on Team Tipster. I'm gonna... I'm gonna flip this up end of turn, which is why I didn't attack. I guess I should let them loot first, but I'm impatient. All right. My question here is, do I just play Vengeful Creeper? Or do I play a face down card? Playing Vengeful Creeper seems pretty good on this board. I'll, I'll just play the Vengeful Creeper. It does remove a counter from the tipster, but I think I'd rather have a 5-5 five five here. Excellent target here for bite down on crime. Blue, white, green, black. All right. That does mean that there's a higher chance that they have a removal spell because they're playing all the colors. Like a bite down on crime on my vengeful creeper, maybe. Buried in the garden, yep. 
Ah, uh, okay. And they attack. Wow. Okay. So let's go. Do I want to kill the inspector? I kind of do. So let's just cast this face down. Kill the inspector and then attack for four. And then this is going to be a 3-3. Three, three. Next turn, we can flip up the Sanguine Savior and also have Bite Down on Crime available. Let me see here. The creature deals damage. So I can give my tipster lifelink and then bite. But of course, it just depends on what they choose to play this turn. Okay, that's... That is fine. Our opponent casts Officious Investigation. It's a lot of... Another Insidious Roots deck. Another Insidious Roots deck. Interesting. Well, let's uh, give this flying, or let's give this lifelink, and we'll just attack. I played the land here so that next turn I can go, if I draw land number seven, I can cast Bite Down on Crime and Makeshift Binding and still attack with Tunnel Tipster. So they have four mana. They have seven mana available, lots of cards in hand, and we have a couple of removal spells. So... We're just kind of at the mercy of what they have. What is this? Create a one, create a plant token, then draw a card equal to the number of differently named creature tokens you control. Okay. All right, this person went real deep. They're kind of trying to do what our last opponent did, but um, perhaps, perhaps went a little bit too deep. All right. <laughs> they had, I think they had a little too much do nothing. That's the thing. I think you can build a good Insidious Roots deck. Our first round opponent proved that. It's just, you, you can't just be playing officious interrogations and just too many or make a 0-1 plant draw card. You just can't play too many of those types of cards. Cordo Calls. I listen to, I, I listen, uh, you should definitely check out his YouTube channel. I watch his content a lot. Especially back when I played less magic and I was preparing for the Pro Tours. He was, along with limited resources, was one of the, the, the few people that I um, went to for uh, updates on the limited format. So definitely check him out. He's great. Let's play the tipster. Try to grow the tipster. Is everybody, is he also on Sultai Insidious Roots? Okay, maybe. We'll see. Oh my gosh. What a top deck. <laughs> uh, Ambusher and I guess Tipster. We're going to kind of go off with these Tipsters, aren't we? I mean, we, we also have the Ambusher. Okay, so I can kill this cadaver. I mean, there's so many things I can do. Oh, geez. Okay. But what I mean is I can just flip this up and kill the cadaver. And if they double block, that's also fine. Just got to see if I have other good options. The thing is, I also can just like flip up the tipster and then just play a face down card and start growing those as well. In terms of battle return, target creature blocks this turn of Abel. Let's kill the cadaver. Happy enough with that trade. So they have an empty board. We have double tipsters and we can start adding a lot. Next turn, we'll have access to six mana. If we flip up the tipster, that's five mana. 
And then we can still go face down card, card into Nightwatch Phantom. Um, yeah, I want to flip down the Vengeful Creeper, I think. All right. Growing our tipsters. We have a night watch here in hand too. But now our tipsters can start attacking. We still have a bite down on crime and a fanatical strength here. Vengeful creeper. If they do play insidious roots, I'm ready. I'm ready for the insidious roots. Huh. What do I want to do here? I think this tipster and this face down card. What happens if I flip this over? I guess I can kill the researcher and the and the and the the morph. I do have a bite down on crime. I wonder if I want to use that this turn. For the, as this is a pretty big turn. I think I kind of want to save it still. Let's just attack with these two. All right, get in for damage there. And then let's go ahead and play another Vengeful Creeper, I guess. I mean, I guess we can just play both. I I feel like this is just going to be way too much for for him to deal with. But we'll see. Locks it on eavesdropper, okay? All right. They have access to 3 mana. I think I want to kill the eavesdropper. And I want to target probably my night watch. And then let's go ahead and let's just attack with everything. What can possibly go wrong? I definitely want to kill the researcher. Because this thing just like taps things every turn. Uh, but let's see if we have lethal. 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, 4, 5, 6, 10, 13, 14. We're one short. We are one short. So let's just go ahead and kill the tapper. Let's get in for an extra point here. Yeah, we are one short. Good game. We had a really great start. We had a great start, but they they had a they had a really sweet looking deck. It looks like we're getting to the point where people are exploring other combinations other than just Boros beats. And it looked they they look cool.
definitely want to see. This is, we're now heading into phase week two of the format, right? So people are trying out a lot of new things, making sure that they draft enough things to do early to survive to get you to that late game. So as long as you make sure that you have whatever cheap interactive spells that you have, even, even a card like Gravestone Strider, look at that deck, right? If you're playing a deck with Insidious Roots, Gravestone Strider, and three colors, it helps you fix. One three is big because everybody plays two twos. Um, so that's probably just the way to build a more controlling defensive deck is just, yeah, take the cheap things that have three toughness. Your opponents can't really punish you. I think the only face down card that truly, well, the, the the card that truly punishes you for playing one threes is I can only think of one that's cheap and that's the uh, Museum Night Watch. So if they're not white, then I think you're mostly okay. Like if they play if they flip over a Dog Walker, that's not bad. That's not good because they still get the two tokens. But at least you trade with the Dog Walker. Okay, we're I wasn't even paying attention. We're two oh seven. We oh turn three hide in plain sight again. Thank you. Thank you, whoever passed this to me, fourth pick. I really appreciate you. I really do. Look at turn. I mean, if they don't have a way to kill my tipster. Yeah, turn three hide and plates at turn four vigilante. Oh, man. Let's do this. Let's target this and this. You, all, you, all, you, you almost always want to choose cards um, that have a converted mana cost because if they die, then you're, that gives you fuel in your graveyard to collect evidence. Oh, okay. So has the Vigilante next turn is going to be wonderful. Um, which one do I want to target? Probably the 3-2. Well... Actually, no, maybe it's just this one. All right. Attack. Okay, Rubble Belt Maverick blocks. That's that's okay. This is we have such a we have such an overwhelming board presence. I mean I mean I know they have to attack with that two one, but it's just Okay. Our 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 presence is uh less overwhelming now. I'm just going to say let's attack with these two uh morphs. And then let's flip this up. <laughs> Remember what I said about one threes and getting punished? <laughs> it literally happened. But we got a bite down on crime here too to kill to kill something big. So yeah, we can use that to kill the slimy dual leech. I guess I don't need to flip this up now. Yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and um target a creature I control. Sure. Do that. Are they dead? They're not dead yet, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just like, I attack you for 13 and I play another face down card and my tipster becomes a 4-4. Four, four. All right. Four and one, I think. Just racking up those wins. All you need, every hand, is turn two tipster. Turn four hide and play, turn three hide in plain sight. Apparently that's the secret. Ramping into your wares. So get out your notebook. Put that down. Okay, get it out. All right, this hand has a lot of promise. Good curve. Don't have any top end stuff, but the novice inspector and the sanitation automaton should help us find some large creatures so we can get a lot of value here with the Sumala Sentry. But this is a nice hand on the draw and we did immediately find a face down card in the Museum Night Watch. That's really nice too because that's a cheap way to flip over a card to pump the Sumala Sentry. So let's go ahead and play the Sentry here. 
And then next turn, we face down the Museum Night Watch and hope. Hope we get it done. But they are red-white. When your opponents play mountains and plains, you're just like, yep, they're the enemy. They are the enemy. We'll play this face down. Put a plus one, plus one counter on it and a plus one, plus one counter on Sumala Sentry. Okay. Don't kill it. Oh, they passed. Post-combat red herring. <laughs> wow, they didn't even attack to show a trick. Okay. Huh. Well, this has to attack next turn. Maybe they don't know it's the... the. I, I want to use this as a surprise. And they have a pretty good um, force already. But I'm really excited about this turn. I'll, I'll tell you that much. They could have investigate the job though. So we have to be careful. If they attack with everything, we have to be very careful. Um, here, I think I'm just going to block with this. Turn it face up. And it becomes a 4-3. If they crack the clue, I'm, I'm happy enough with that. They spent their turn to do that. And we now have a 4-3 and a 2-4. All right. Their deck is fantastic, though. It's just all premium. That, the thing with red, red and white is just like almost every common is premium. <laughs> so... Do I want to attack with the Night Watch? Or keep it back for now? Let's draw a card with the clue and see what we find. It's a knot on my watch. I think my opponent still has a better board than me. So I'm just gonna wait. I do have knot on my watch. So I want to use that this turn. Novice Inspector. Yeah, they have a great deck. Great deck. We, we blocking. Auspicious Arrival. <laughs> Not on my watch. I've always wanted to do that. <laughs> yes. Clean. That's clean living right there. A clean two for one. Okay. Oh, and we drew the white swords here for the Sanguine Savior. I believe now it's okay to attack with Museum Nightwatch. I mean, if it's a dog walker, it's a dog walker. All right. I won't flip this up just yet. I mean, maybe I should have to gain the life right away, but I want to keep it kind of a secret for now. I don't know what's better against red, white. I am at 20. I feel like if they attack us, I do have the option to flip this up and block with the sentry. So that that already seems pretty good. We just have to be careful of like a sus attack is what I'm going to say. Um, curious what this card is. That's the only thing that kind of scares me. I was hoping I didn't draw that one. I mean, okay. I can't complain about drawing that one. It's it's definitely a good card. But with a face down card, I probably just relax this turn and wait till the next turn before I make a big attack. 
So let's go ahead and play the Vigilante. Let's target our face down card. Yeah, I should have I should have flipped. I don't know what I was thinking. I should have flipped this up. All right. So whatever this is, they they should flip up. If not, the cards Yeah, if if they don't flip it up then my brain is mush. I don't know what it is. Okay. Then it's telling me it's like a a small utility creature or whatever. That's what that's telling me. Okay. Well, we're definitely killing that one. Okay, so... Let's see. How do I want to do this? They have three mana up. Let's target the Vigilante because that's going to attack. And then let's cast Bite Down on Crime. Target the Vigilante and the Watchdog. What can they have? Oh, Felonia. Oh, sure. I gain a bunch of life. And... I mean, I'm at 26. Attack, attack, attack. Attack, attack, attack. I guess this gets blocked by Thraben Inspector. Maybe we just attack with those and then just have this pump uh, a uh, Novice Inspector. I get. I don't want to get galvanized, which is why I targeted the Hazla Vigilante over the Sanguine Savior. But I definitely should have flipped over the Sanguine Savior the turn before. So that was 100% a misstep on my part. Hopefully we don't have to pay for it. They are flooded, which is great. Oh, uh, okay, that's what that card was. They still need to... I mean, we, we have a superior offensive force here. So they, they need to find an answer for what we have. Wow, that was a phenomenal draw from the opponent. Galvanize on our Sanguine Savior. Okay, they are staying alive. Yep, this keeps them at five. We do have Market Watch Phantom. Now we do get an extra creature here off the Night Watch. But they are on the brink of being able to stabilize. Hmm. Uh, they're looting. I guess they're probably desperate. This has to be a desperation loot. They've drawn a lot of lands. They've drawn really poorly, I think, in general. We're at 36. We're obviously taking this. I don't think they would play a Wrath in their red-white deck, so... Yep. I mean, this is definitely just an attack with every... And this is an attack with everything type situation. We have 5, 6, 7, 8 mana, so we can't flip this up. But we can get put it play it face down and give the market watch phantom flying. They block tooth, yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe a tiny bit sloppy there. Unclear. Our opponent, condolences. It sucks when uh you you have you get so flooded that you can't even put up a fight. But I will note that they had a great deck and I wouldn't be surprised if they end up going, getting five or six wins with that deck at least. All right, now battling, battling against rank 52 player. 
I am on the play. I have the tipster. I have all white cards, but I have a ton of face down cards in my deck, and I feel like it's really hard to mulligan turn two tipster on the play. So I'm going to be believe in my deck because basically the only cards that are bad to draw here are, are non-disguised white cards for the most part. So planes are good. Face down cards are good. Hide and plane side off the top. Let's go. Okay. I mean, that's a playable card. Can't be mad at that. Turn one, Hedge Whisperer into, oh, Nervous Gardener, turn two. Good curve. And we found, we found a Plains. All right, so that makes everything great. We can face down the Sanguine Savior. Tunnel Tipster grows, and we can play Novice Inspector. So we're developing a pretty good board. The clue from the Inspector will help us find more face down cards. Do we care about, uh, I mean, this is, this is got to be better than Nervous Gardener. Another face down card from the opponent, and then we draw inside source. I suppose we're just gonna play that. And then we'll just crack the clue end of turn. And I'm happy trading this detective for this gardener if that's what they wanna do. I've, I've been seeing a lot of salt tie. Look, I'm not in any fancy um, Discord groups or anything like that. I'm not in any fancy limited Discord groups. I think there might be this like secret organization of high-level mythic players that all got together collectively and was like, green is actually the best color and you should be salt tie. You should be salt tie, collect evidence. Because I've seen... This is my third opponent that's playing... Sultai shenanigans. And here I am just taking two drops like a chump. Okay. Um, I mean, might as well just go to the skies, right? I could keep up not on my watch, but what am I killing with not on my watch? I'm not interested in killing any of these things. So let's play this face down. I guess I can attack with the detective too. Just to gain life. Or trade, I don't care. I mean, they could make a 5-5, five five, I guess. But if they spend their whole turn to do that, I mean, it's, I'm not too concerned, I guess. Oh, yes. Vengeful Creeper. Let's go. <laughs> yes, we get the satchel. <laughs> What's funny is I feel like I got like excellent value out of that and they're still they still have two clues in play. <laughs> but I really wanted to prevent them from making 1-1 one -one flyers because I have a Sanguine Savior in play. So it was good. It was definitely good. Satchel is incredible though. So it looks like they're... I, what are... What are how are... I mean, this is a high mythic player. Like obviously they know what they're doing. I'm just trying to figure out what their splash is. Do splash cards not exist? They're green-based. They have a gore hound, right? But they have a blue-red card. Are they splashing the gore hound? Like, straight three colors is just not ever really a thing. I don't think so, at least. But maybe, again, this is just my old rotted brain. My old rotted brain. What? What is... What, what What is happening? 
Oh, bite that bite. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay. I see. I see. But they have they have the bite spell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's. I mean, yeah, that that's that's all right. That's all right, I guess. You can attack with the tipster and this, and then the tipster will grow again. God, this this is a two drop. It's a four four. Now they can make a five five land, so we just have to be we have to be mindful of that. Is it as long as it's in play? Target land you control becomes a five five green plant token for as long as Hedge Whisperer remains tapped. So if I just kill it, I'm good. Hmm. Can they do they have enough evidence to collect? It looks like they do. Oh, I should not do that. What am I doing? Um Let's just wait. Oh, they can only activate as a sorcery. I'm a silly goose. I am a I am just the silliest goose. I've I have not played with this card much. All right. I make the mistakes so you don't have to. Oh, and I'm just this I'm just this is the ultimate. I am paying for this so dearly. I probably could have just won, huh? Oh my god. Dop I mean Anytime somebody casts for eight, I j you just lose. Oh no. What, what have I done? This is so bad. This is so bad. I need it to be more gra- I don't think they would have died anyways. They would have just chumped. They would have just chumped. So, all right. Well, let's, let's bounce back from this somehow. So bad. Okay, so we, we got to kill the flyers. Let's figure out what we need to do. Let's just turn this face up. All right, so we got to kill the flyers, right? We got to kill the flyers so our flyer can get in. Okay. Just just thinking, thinking. Okay. Okay. Think I just want to eat two creatures with this? Maybe not. We'll just do that. All right, we still have a flyer. They need an answer for Sanguine Savior. Projector Inspector, draw a card. Let's go Sanguine Savior. They discarded Undercover Crocodile and said good game. Woo! Oh man, we just, I don't think, a, I have never beaten a Doppelgang for two. Doppelgang is incredible. They had a sweet deck. Salt High Value is what it seems like all the cool kids are playing. All right. Oh, that feels good. Okay, 124. We're in the hundreds. This is good. We're climbing.
I'm loving it. All right, we are 124. Road to rank one getting close. Six and one. Almost lost to Doppelgang. But we didn't. We didn't. Facing some really tough comp competition now. But the, the wins are a lot more satisfying when your opponents are just... Because when you're climbing up, your opponents will just make a lot of mistakes. But now we're at the point where a lot of these players have just played more magic than I have. And they're all great limited players, right? They're, they're high mythic players. So um, it just feels a lot more satisfying to be able to defeat these really great players. Because we're also taking their, their rating, right? We're taking their ranking. We are climbing up. We're climbing up and uh, tossing them off to the side. It's like, oh, what's the air like down there? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, six and one, playing for win number seven. We haven't had a seven win streak in a while. It's a lot harder, to be fair, but going for win number seven. Okay. All right. Forest, Plains, Tunnel, Tipster, Hide in Plain Sight. Yes. We just need to draw land number three to make sure we can play Hide in Plain Sight on turn three. That would be awesome. If not, then we can still play a Sumala Sentry or a Face Down Vengeful Creeper. We drew the land, but they are playing... They just they did fetch for a mountain, so they can kill this tipster. They're blue-red. What did they do? They just played a bubble smuggler. Okay. Okay. They just played a bubble smuggler. Time to hide in plain sight. Vengeful Creeper, Market Watch Phantom. And we get a 2-2 tipster. Okay, let's overwhelm them. Shall we? Oh, Sumala Sentry! Sumala Sentry with Market Watch Phantom is awesome! We can flip this up. Oh man, we can flip this up and it'll be a 3-3. So next turn, if I play the sentry and flip this up, I'll have a 3-3 and a 2-4. I mean, I have a lot of options here, right? And they're still on three mana. What are they do? What are they gonna do? Interesting. Okay, so we just gotta we gotta dodge. We gotta dodge the minefields here. Hmm. Okay, this is this is I'm gonna call this a chill turn. We're gonna play the sentry. Actually, maybe it's just sentry a flip up the market watch. But they could have the plus three plus oh first strike card. But I don't want to overextend into a sweeper either. All right. I'm just passing. Okay. <laughs> that is okay. All right, let's turn this face up. Okay, they're 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 just Is it whenever, what, hold on. Whenever it's turned face up. So I can just cloak it, right? I'm just gonna overwhelm them with my board and hope I don't get sw sweepered out. That's kind of why I'm doing this. And I have a six, six in play. So they're gonna need something big to kill the creeper. Blue, blue red does have the four mana sorcery sweeper. But they didn't have it here, so we're good. And 6, 79, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, we did it. We did it. We got the trophy. Seven wins with green white. We wanted to draft green. Green was open, almost hit top 100. This was an awesome, awesome run, starting at rank 300-something, rank 304, and now here we are at rank 109, moving up 200 slots. Was that a good run? Was that a good run? 
I think it was. I think it was. So let's take a look at our awesome, awesome deck here. We drew extremely well. Not going to lie. Anytime you get a trophy, though, or anytime you do well in any tournament, you, of course, have to have luck, skill, and victory, as they say. But this was just a really, 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 really solid deck. I mean, everything else was just fine. But hide and play, we got to do this three or four times. And if you ever go turn two tipster, turn three hide and play side, it's just, it's so hard for, for the opposition, right? Because you're often, if, especially if you're playing a tunnel tipster deck, you're just going to be playing a deck that has a bunch of these large creatures that you can flip up on top of that, right? This is not just a four mana put two bears into play. It's, it's basically giving you six mana most of the time of value for four. Right, and then you're ramping it out. So on turn three, you're getting six mana worth of stats, which is why this card is impressive. Tunnel Tipster again continues to impress me. Uh, I just always want a ton of these cards in my green decks with a bunch of morphs. I mean, often this was a three three or a four four that also ramped us. So the real question for me is, do you take the Tipster or the um, four mana Loxodon that investigates? Because I think the Loxodon has a higher win rate. But I just feel like I always want tipsters. Like, I want a bunch of tipsters. I need, like, three tipsters before I consider the first Loxodon. But maybe that's just me. But this deck just solid curve. Almost all creatures. We had Sumala Sentry, which also did a good amount of work. It's just an excellent body. Two mana, one, three. And works really, really nicely with Museum Nightwatch and Sanguine Savior. Because these are cheap discard effect, uh, cheap flip effects, right? It's not Sumala Sentry isn't that great with a Vengeful Creeper, right? This is a six mana card to flip over. But when you have Sanguine Savior, Dog Walker, Museum Night Watch, the cheap ones, that's when you can grow this and it gets out of hand. So that was also great. Don't have to say anything about Novice Inspector. Uh, uh, Vengeful Creeper definitely did some work. The Disenchant effect was really, really relevant. So this card, it looks pretty average, and it kind of is, but it's better than you think, is what I mean. I think this is better than most of the other big hybrid morph creatures. This is definitely very good because the fact that there's multiple things to kill with the disenchant effect and the fact that you can also just play this turn five as a five mana five five, whereas a lot of the other creatures are just not great on rate. This is a five mana five five. That's, you pass the vanilla test there, right? However, this one is a six mana four three flyer. That is way, way worse, right? Just on rate. If this was maybe a four four flyer, Maybe it'd be a little bit better, but the fact that your six drop can get galvanized, not great. So really excited about this result. Got our first trophy in a very long time. We went seven and one with a really solid green white deck. Lots of cheap things to do. A bomb in hide and plain sight. This is a bomb. This is great. Never drew the glint weaver. And then we had a good number of tricks that we uh, all used pretty well, right? These all came in very, very handy. And this is kind of the way that I want to build my decks. I want... 17 creatures and six spells most of the time in this format just because it's so important to fill out the the early part of your curve so great great success today folks great great success rank 109 oh actually somebody fell rank 108 great great place to end this really really happy about this and that moves us so much closer on our road to rank one Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more videos just like this. I'll catch you tomorrow.